What's up, gang? This is What's Poppin' with Whitmire. Today we have with us... My name is Cheyenne Summer, and I'm a recording artist in Calgary, Alberta. Oh, wow. Out of Canada, then. Out of Canada, yep. Okay, that's really cool. I mean, uh, I think the the pop genre up there, just in Canada, is like a whole, it's a lot bigger. Like, with the talent pool, at least. A hundred percent. It's been fun exploring all the local talent and then just everybody. It's so amazing how much we have here that you don't even hear about. Yeah. So that's why I love that Twitter has connected us to, you know, check you out as an artist. And I played some of your music recently and um, I like Circles the most. I did like the uh, feature you had too on I Spy. That was an interesting mix up from your other sounds. Yeah, no, Circles is definitely my favorite for sure. It's the most uh, personal, I would say. It's the song I writ- wrote all by myself. And then it was nice to have Tiny Wings on as a feature just to kind of help build my presence as I really only had one release before. So it's just nice to have okay. that extra help there. So are you are you producing everything on your own too? Or do you go to somebody for that? No, so I actually, my boyfriend's a producer, so he is the one Mm. that helps create everything, and it's just nice because sometimes it's just that unspoken bond where it's like he knows exactly what I'm thinking I want in the song without me even having to say it, so it's perfect. (laughs) Uh, There's an artist, Billie Eilish. I don't know if you've heard of her. Oh, yeah. She's pretty big. Um, I mean, she just makes music with her brother, and so, like, if you have a bond and you're doing it together, like, I could see how that would work and the chemistry and synergizing Mm -hmm. i mean you definitely have to be in the right place because we've definitely butted heads for sure and had our own arguments (laughs) but when we're on the same level it's magic (laughs) i bet um so personally like when i was listening to at least circles i was kind of thinking that you have more of like a southern rock indie feel but what do you genreize your music as, and what's one song you would want people to check out for me? So I would say we were going for more of an R and B soul, but I have so much country mm-hmm. influence that it's it's actually kind of nice to hear other people recognize it. So it's something that we've been kind of tapping into, especially with the live instrumentation and everything. But I would definitely say if you haven't heard any of my music, to check out Circles first. It's my personal favorite so far. Okay. I mean, yeah, like definitely your voice has a lot of like soul and the harmonics are really amazing in my opinion. Thank you. Um, So we know you're from Canada. I honestly thought you were from like South, you know, America, oh, really? like somewhere in like maybe like Texas or Mississippi. Oh, okay. So that's very interesting. I didn't look that up. So it's cool <laughs> to find out. Yeah, no, um, it's amazing what Twitter has been able to do. Connect us with so many different people yeah and hopefully through things like this interview sharing out your music uh you can get some new fans exactly Fingers because <laughs> well i mean typically what i realized about spooky kitten records is that as an entertainment network i thought kind of like we were gonna get more like indie rock bands submitting and such but I mean, the only time it really happens is from these Facebook pop punk groups and stuff I'm in. But uh, it's interesting to see that there's more of like an R&B, hip hop, rap sense on our channel and the people checking out our stuff. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, I've interviewed some rappers recently, but the first interview I did was for a synth pop guy that I know. Yeah, his name's Jacoby. He goes by Why the Ghost. And uh, and he's been seeing some interesting people like, you know, now like him that he wouldn't have thought liked him before. No, 100%. Yeah, I totally agree. And I really love your channel because I've been following your playlist and everything. And it's just nice to not have everything be the exact same where you hit shuffle and you're going to get a different vibe with each song, but they still all are very good together. Yeah, I mean, we, we want to, like, help out artists, and each week the playlist grows, and uh, we try to just get new genres and such, and so for that playlist, at least, like, there is no limit on what genre you could be listening to, and that might, like, not be the best interest for people, I realize, 
but also like it's a cool way to find out you know new artists you can always mm-hmm. skip to if you're not feeling it and so what i have started doing with spooky kitten is uh making genre playlists like we'll still have the mixed genre but i'm trying to help like in a different sense now so in time we'll get like an indie or a rock playlist which we're in developing uh on our spotify channel and we'll definitely put you on there oh well thank you no it's nice especially because sometimes you don't fit specifically in a genre like it's you're not pop enough or you're not hip-hop enough so it's nice that some playlists are like well we accept all good music and it's like okay good like there's yeah for us here <laughs> no i agree with that um what inspired you to you know make music um i've always been drawn to music especially when i started teaching myself guitar it was a really good emotional outlet but i would mm. say the last few years especially listening to my boyfriend just produce music for other people and starting to understand the process I started to appreciate it and was like okay like I could see myself writing some songs and getting through the motions and then slowly over the last few years we've created these songs that you've heard that's amazing I mean I've liked what I've heard I honestly thought it was really well produced that was like one of the first things I noticed I was like it sounds really well produced so it's cool to figure out it's someone that is close to you that you're that's helping you guys I imagine like both live out your dreams like you both want to be doing this type of thing yeah exactly well and it's good we both motivate each other because there's days where it's like it's so easy to just hang out on the couch here seeing no and like immediate (laughs) satisfaction from what you're doing so there's days where i have to boost him up and days where he has to boost me up so it's a perfect balance all right yeah i mean that's cool though that you guys like both have this outlet um who's who's your favorite artist right now um i'd have to say casey musgraves i've been following her for the last few years and i've been really enjoying watching her grow into her own kind of genre and her own artist so you like how she's progressed and where she's at now um what did you think of her most recent release i mean i was a little disappointed with her most recent album uh especially when you look at the tracks individually i just thought it was a little bleh but Mm. as a whole i understand what she was going for and the story she was trying to tell so at least as an artist i can appreciate what she was doing it was just I was expecting more from her last album. So basically, like, you you had very high hopes for it, and then you think it's just, like, a safe album. But as a fan, you're like, I expected so much more because of your previous work. Yeah, especially just with all the experience she talked about, her previous album and all the live instrumentation to go to strictly, like, all electronic instruments and nothing real. It just kind of left an empty space for me. I felt like there's some missing elements for sure. I mean, one thing that could be challenging too for an artist like that is uh, not being able to be in contact with your team or Mm -hmm. even people that you work with. And so the pandemic has been a struggle for everybody. Oh, yeah. Has it been good for you? Has it been bad for you? Have you learned some things? I think it's been good for me, honestly, because it kind of helped me slow down. I was in too many different directions at once. I was in full-time school, full-time work, and then when I came home, I'd focus on music. So the pandemic Mm -hmm. really helped me go, you know what, I don't need school and I don't need work. Like, if I want to do music, that's what I got to focus on. So it's really helped me just focus on pursuing my career and my dreams, and yeah. Well, I'm glad to hear that. I mean, for everybody, it's a toss up for me. Like what you said, I love that time is kind of slowed down a little bit. Mm -hmm. You actually can think about things and learn from them instead of having to live like a fast food lifestyle, just going through life and feeling like you're in the meat grinder constantly. Well, I'm feeling like you're missing out because everyone's out doing something where now it's like, well, I know everyone's home, so I may as well be (laughs) productive and come out of this stronger very true um so i'm gonna ask you a personal question we want to you know make people understand you as a human being Mm -hmm. um what do you what do you struggle with in life and how do you overcome it or plan to i would say i struggle most with my mental health like my adhd and my anxiety but the best thing that i can do is try to wake up in a good mindset and if I know I've woken up and I'm miserable then I try to just do little things like 
um, if I look good, then I should feel good. Like if I'm going to wear sweatpants then I'm probably going to feel like crap during the day, but if I can put on some jeans and a nice shirt, then like I could probably feel a little better about myself. And then I always try to go on a walk at least once a day, just clear my head and get the juices going. That's a good stress reliever. Yeah. And I think so like much clearer when I'm walking too, because then it's like I'm doing five different things at once. So my brain's like, okay, you can think about what you want to think about now. Basically just like learning how to um, hyper fixate or focus per se. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, since it sounds like mental health is a big thing in your life, um, what, do you, what do you do to stay focused? You said you take walks. Is there other things that you do? Uh, it's a lot of just self-discipline because I can spend hours just pacing the house telling myself like you got to do this you got to get down to work like you just wasted three hours but if I can't just sit down and start working then I just need to get out I know like if I can't just sit down and get right to work then I'm probably not ready <laughs> take a breather mm -hmm. and try to come back in an hour or so because there's no point in fighting myself uh, that's some good advice it's the hardest thing I've learned but <laughs> I've slowly just come to accept you know what if you're not ready just walk away and come back in an hour I got you. Um, so I know you said uh, Casey Musgrave is your um, favorite artist, right? Yeah. Um, or someone maybe that inspired you, per se. Uh, what What's your favorite song and why, though? Is it by her or is it by somebody else? Uh, well, that's a hard one. I would say just off the top of my head, my favorite song is The Dance by Garth Brooks. And it's just me and my mom have loved Garth Brooks. And that's just a song that's so emotional and deep, but still by one of like my favorite artists. And I honestly don't even know why. I couldn't tell you why it's my favorite, but it's just the first song that always pops in my mind. Okay. <laughs> um, I'll definitely like have to play it while it's coming up on this clip. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's pretty country, but... I mean, it would make sense to, like, the Southern Roots, too, in mm -hmm. your music. Um, what Something that we ask people is, uh, what, what do you want people to know about you that maybe doesn't know anything about you outside of maybe watching this video or just now finding you? And what do you do outside of music currently? So I guess one thing I want people to know about me is, um, I don't even know how to answer that. Just the fact that, like, I don't know, I'm obviously I make music for myself, but I'm making music for others, too. Like, I, mm. I feel like I haven't done a good job if other people can't message me and be like, I totally get what you're trying to say. Like, I went through this, so I'm so glad that you wrote about it. Like, I just when I'm writing, I'm trying to heal myself and hopefully other people can connect with the music as well, because that's what I found got me through a lot of life is just a song that I was like, I connect, like, let's listen to this on repeat for a whole day. I definitely feel that. And then uh, what what do you do outside of music currently? I know you said you were going to school and were working, but what do, what do you do the past the days? Honestly, I've just been doing outreach or I'm on my phone. I'm just trying to do the <laughs> business side of music because I realized okay. music itself isn't what gets you anywhere you got to really be your own manager for a while and message everybody and yeah if I'm not reaching out to someone no one's gonna reach out to me that's very true yeah um okay so what it, what do you plan to do with the rest of the year musically like are you releasing anything are you holding off until next year do you have like music videos maybe in mind? Yeah, so I have a few songs that I've one song fully written, but we haven't recorded and then a handful of songs that I've half written. So we're thinking about releasing maybe one more single just to bridge the gap uh, between spring and now. But I'm working either on a EP or a full album. We'll see how far I get in these next few months. Okay. Yeah. And so, uh, you plan to do a single this year and then maybe next year you'll have like a project idea. Yeah. So hopefully release a single maybe in November or October and then in the spring, hopefully release an EP or an album. We'll see. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that sounds like a solid plan. Singles can get you by. They can be like the gap filler until like you do have like a solidified idea. 
Yeah, and just so, keep people intrigued and kind of up to date with where I am. I mean, that's a good idea. And also maybe like vlogging is a very good idea to like get on YouTube. And so people can like relate to you outside of music because yeah. it's one thing to constantly see an artist, you know, and just see them doing music and stuff all the time. But you don't also see maybe when they're like sitting on the couch writing the guitar part for it, exactly. you know, or like yeah, just the small things the that scenes. combined it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah, that's definitely one thing that I've written down is that I notice people definitely want to see the process of everything. It's nice to see the perfect polished piece, but they want to see all the dirty bits too. So what happened? Like, where did the song begin? Is it the exact same as what you originally thought or is it completely different now? So that's going to be fun to create those pieces too. I agree with that. I mean, even when I make music myself, like I, I, I don't think about even just like doing a video or something. And that's just the smallest thing anybody could be doing. Yeah. After watching that Billie Eilish documentary, I was like, I just need to go get a little handheld camera and just set it up every time I pick up the guitar because eventually it's going to create something. Yeah. Or you can make like a montage video, like if you don't exactly. know what to do with things. Exactly. So I don't I don't know how things are really up in Canada because of the pandemic, but are you playing shows? Are you doing a tour? So I had my first show booked for September 19th, but because of the pandemic and everything happening, it got canceled. Well, rescheduled. Um, but yeah, we'll see. We're not sure. Alberta's restrictions have worsened again. So okay. hopefully it kind of eases up before christmas time so that we can get that show in there but we'll see for now unfortunately no live shows i understand that's unfortunate yeah Aww. here here in the u.s uh people have been playing shows but it hasn't been going so great because yeah well are... and i just didn't want my first show to be like well a cheyenne summer show resulted in a huge outbreak and it's like oh, i don't <laughs> want that on my hands no thanks i, I mean yeah you definitely don't want that on your hands no um so i'm gonna ask you a last question um what advice would you give to anybody listening to you right now don't get caught up in the numbers i know everybody posts like oh i have a thousand streams today or oh look at we're mm. at a hundred thousand but it's at the end of the day a stream doesn't result in a fan i'd rather have 10 fans than ten thousand streams you know what i mean it's just I'd rather have something solid than something so artificial and inflated. I definitely feel that because like what people think is that they need to get on these like Spotify editorial playlists, but you can even get on these smaller playlists like ours and get real fans out of it because it's someone genuinely wanting to find new music. Exactly. Half of the time on these uh, editorial playlists, just because I've had friends on them, I've been on uh, a couple of these radio things that they have like in discover weeklies mm -hmm. and what i realized is you can get thousands of plays thousands upon thousands but maybe like people like your song they might even just only like that song because like i think about it when i'm listening to discover weekly and i find a song i don't really check into the artist mm -hmm. i like the song and then i move on and i feel like that kind of happens with a lot of people now i'm thinking about it a hundred percent. Yeah. Like when I released circles, it was just really interesting to see that all my other songs slowly started picking up too. And it was like, okay, like I thought I was going to leave them in the dust, but they're all like going along with each other. So it was really cool to know that just because they're a bit older, they're not old news. Like people are still liking them. People are still discovering. Yeah. Them. It's just nice to know that I'm not making stuff either. That's completely different. Like they like one song, but they're like, what did she release here? Like, it's all kind of cohesive. It's it's good to build a catalog, too. Yeah. So, I mean, I know I just brought up the point of maybe not checking out fans, but also I do or uh, pages after I find something on Discover Weekly. But sometimes I do. And then when I do, half of the time, because it's maybe a new TikTok artist or something, they have, like, two songs out. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, man. <laughs> you know? know and I so, like, as you build so it... More. Yeah, and so, like, say someone finds you out, then, you know, as you're building your music in time, like, you have that catalog, so someone's like, man, I like this song, I want to see what they're doing, and so in time, as you're releasing more, like, it's going to pick up for you as well. 
Exactly. Well, and it's like if my first single did amazing and incredibly well, that doesn't necessarily mean my next single, my next one's going to do well either. Like I like to slowly build it up and just skyrocket and disappoint people. Like just build people up and be like, okay, like what do we expect from her? Like we're going to get something new and exciting, not like, wow, she had this amazing one song. Like I hope she can do it again as in a one hit wonder. That yeah, I, I definitely agree with that. It's it's good to string out the single process as long as you can. I know you said you want to do a project, but personally, I haven't. I put out an EP with a friend, and I put it on his page because uh, he actually wrote all the music for it, besides some of the lyrics. Mm-hmm. And so, I haven't per se put out an EP, but I've put out like. 25 28 singles and now that's a catalog by itself so you can string out this process as long as you want exactly and then when you have like because like i'm an artist that likes to put art to the music and Mm -hmm. so like if i'm gonna do like an ep or an album i i want to put music videos to it that are like cool to it you know yeah no 100 percent. i get that I know that's the next step I want to get at is just getting some funding and actually doing a proper music video. I think it would get a few more fans his way and maybe help explain the song in a different way that no one understood. You could always do just like a when you do these behind the scene videos too. Uh, you could do uh, like more of like I think it's called like behind the reasoning or something like that. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Kind that of like would be a cool the idea. And genius kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. And you could, I mean, I've seen like rappers do it, but you could just like put up the lyrics on the side with the genius and then you could uh, do a video explaining it. No, 100%. Especially because sometimes people like to know what the artist was trying to portray. But for the longest mm-hmm. time, I was, as when I was first releasing them, I was like, no, I don't want to taint anybody's mind. Like, I want them to come up with what they thought the song was. And then later on down the line, I'll explain what it meant to me. But I didn't want to have anybody being like, well, no, it's a sad song, so we have to be sad. It's like, well, no, it could be empowering to you and sad to me. Like, I want you to take away what you take away. <laughs> I definitely agree with that. Like, you, the artist is always going to have a different meaning than what the fan or just casual listener will, you know, mm-hmm. transcribe through it. When I love learning what it meant to someone else, because it's like, well, I never thought of that lyric being taken that way. Like, it's just exactly. nice to know what other people think instead of just me. That's very true. Um, I, sorry, I'm going to ask one more question, but I'll pause. No worries. <laughs> okay so this is going to be the final question i'm going to ask you and i just want to try and understand how you plan to branch out maybe to the u.s to get your music out there because pop music is very big in canada in general but obviously like the top 40 here always has pop in it oh yeah and so how how do you get to the u.s with your music and what's your strategy if you don't mind telling I think right now I just I know Canada is going to be hard enough to break and the US is hard because it's so saturated with other really yeah. big artists that it's hard for a small artist to even get radio play like I messaged a radio and they're like we love your song so much but unfortunately we have a strict uh list that we have to play and even though we like it we can't play it and it's like oh okay so this is the game I have to play then so I actually think my best bet would be doing Europe or a Europe tour or opening for a Mm. band first and just kind of making my presence known and kind of like what JP Sachs did I don't know if you've heard of him but he Uh a little tour with Lennon Stella and then right after that he just blew up so it that, would, feel like that would be a good going, idea for the U.S. Yeah, so I feel like either just op- being an opening act for someone first or having a small little European tour and really just building up my fan base before I jump into the big, big cities. Okay. Um, one, one thing I would like to clear up with you is that your whole strategy is a good idea with the tour thing. I would have never thought about that. <laughs> so that's a genius strategy. Thank you. But one thing is with the radio play you don't even need that anymore like a radio play is so i don't know 
basically just like a dinosaur example on how to get big now. Yeah. Basically, I've looked up the cost from the east to the west coast, and it's like a million plus dollars just to get played through all the states and the big cities. Oh, yeah. And you don't make really a good ROI from it. And so I don't think you really need the radio anymore. And how music has evolved, you just have to get on playlists. You just have to – really, the internet is the biggest tool. The internet killed the radio Honestly, when you could stream music. <laughs> yeah, well, and that's why I mean, like, that's why I'm on social media every day. As much as I hate doing all the little TikToks and the tweets and all that, <laughs> I know that, like, it's the only way people are going to hear me and see me because not everyone listens to the radio and not everyone watches – cable anymore so yeah do what you gotta do to market yourself exactly and so i don't know i just wanted to say that because like i've heard people in the past say like man i just need to get on the radio and it's like yeah that is a way you could do it but you could really do it free almost if yeah. you're just smart on how you do it on the internet you can do paid promotions but i mean you have to learn how to do target demographics and a bunch yeah. of things no 100 percent. and it's amazing to hear yourself on the radio but it's like but did anybody else hear it or did i just tune in because i knew i was on there like exactly just, that's what I, it's hard to not get caught up in the numbers sometimes but it is a numbers game too you got to know where your people are and who to target like you said and all that fun stuff and and if you really like want to get on radios here in the states my my only suggestion would be is try to just get on college radios they want yeah. music and people actually listen to those and so that would be maybe one radio aspect but i want to look at it as a way to like blow you up by any means yeah no i honestly i have a whole excel sheet of all like radio stations <laughs> brought or uh, broken down into like states and if they're college or if they're top 40 and yeah you definitely get more responses from university stations than just the regular radio stations well it sounds like you have like a good plan uh you're having fun making music oh, yeah. you've worked on your mental health through this whole pandemic and that you have like some life goals that you're gonna get done oh yeah and so i've enjoyed this interview and I'm sure anybody listening to it will go check out your music. Well, thank you so much for having me. It's, I really appreciate it. Thank you.